off. Doesn't stick to anything. Now we spin it back. 180 again, it's a little tight, but and it works. Looks like we figured out a way to do it. Good morning, good morning, good morning, everybody. Got my coffee going here. I slept again for like 10 hours last night. I don't know what's wrong with me. I'm sleeping like a crazy amount. I feel very refreshed, though. So feel real good, real good. All right, let's see. What do I need to do today on vlog number 48? I still have on my list skin slash armor sketches and sketches for stand that holds the deep frame. So I guess we're working on those. And then the last thing we'll need to do is build that build a spreadsheet. So let's go ahead and get started on some sketches and stuff, doing some little bit of thinking and see where that leads us. Welcome to vlog number 48. Okay, so the, the switchable magnets that I showed you once before, those, turn, those have shown to be a rather special type of magnet they use in those, and I haven't 100% figured out how they're doing it exactly. But I was just on YouTube looking around and I found another guy who made a switchable magnet using a 3D printed system which seems in just normal store bought like magnets that are cylindrical that are about this big. That seemed to be right up my alley um, in that regard and uh, I want to show you kind of the principles of how those switching magnets work and I'm also going to link to the video so that his has got six magnets around some steel and then they're touching the steel and he's, what you're doing is changing up the magnetic flux lines by twisting it one phase movement. I'm going to link to his video so you can watch it because he'll do a better job of explaining it to me. Explaining it than I will, but let me show you really quick kind of part of what he talked about. So here is like a quick idea of what he was talking about. So essentially by arranging whether the magnetic poles, these would be two pieces of steel and this would be a ferromagnetic steel and this would be two magnets steel magnets. So by changing the south and north poles, the south is going to go to the north. This is where the flux lines are going to go. So if you put a piece of metal here, it'd be very attracted because the flux lines are coming off the metal. And here, there'd be almost no attraction because this is acting as a yoke and allowing the flux lines to travel through it. <coughs> so the switching mechanism he made is just essentially from going to the off position to the on position in a clever way. So I just got to find a clever way to do that. He used six I'll show you his video so you can see how his, his worked. I'm not sure I'll do his exactly, but something similar to this would allow me to do that. So what I need to do now is I need to get a quick little sketch put together of the clamping mechanism. Um, um, do that kind of similar to a... Of the clamping mechanism, I do it kind of similar, like I said, to a pair of vice grips. So here is back to this sketch, which you might remember is a lumbar bolt-on. So this is just an idea of that, but essentially what I'm trying to show here is that there's these pieces coming off, and so this is the deep part, and then how I'm going to hold the deep part, which is part of what I'm trying to figure out, is I'm thinking just an on-off type of thing, but instead of being a magnet, it would just be a clamp that clamped down onto this real tight. And I'm imagining a, a very similar mechanism to a pair of vice grips. So some kind of spring that has a good mechanical advantage and pushes down on that really hard. And I'll be able to make the grips parts out of the water jet cut parts. So they'll be nice and strong and then probably some 3D printed parts in there for some of the mechanism stuff. So I need to get a sketch of that. All right, this is how a pair of vice grip pliers work. So there's these, so we have this point is a axis of rotation right here, but it's kind of, and then the tension is adjusted here. And then these, so these three points, which are on the drawing, these three points, get as these get squeezed together like this, that pushes this point in between these, and these create a straight line. And it's very high mechanical advantage in there, and as that pushes, that pushes this one around that, and causes these to close. So when I push this down, it causes this to close, and that gets pushed in there really quick. And then this spring is for causing it to pop open. There's enough force in here, this is very hard to get up, and you can get these to open by just taking them and pushing them open. But there's also this thing right here, and when it's, so when it's really tight, this offers a mechanical advantage to push this, and by pushing on this, it pushes this away from this and causes that to collapse open like that, so it causes, so they're in a straight line, it causes them to come out of a straight line, and then the spring takes over and causes them to pop open. So that's how those work. So I'm imagining something like this, I need to figure out a way to build this out of flat metal, so I can have them water jet cut and then I can have like a hundred of them made while I have the suit made or doesn't have to be a hundred but enough to <clears throat> completely hold the deep 
frame and that's how I'm going to hold it. So something very similar to this. So I got to redraw this for flat steel, but that's essentially how we're going to do that. These are used rivets to put on here. So I could use something like that or I could use bolts. I don't know. All right. So this is how it would be made out of sheet metal that is water jet cut. So all the, so this is the vice grip deep stand holder. So all of the dark parts are a single layer and all the white, the parts that aren't shooted are a double layer. So here you would have this part would be a single piece, this would be a single piece, and this would be a single piece, and then some kind of nut system. And then these would be supported on both sides, and that's where you would put your your axes of rotation through in order to grip it. And then something over here, I haven't decided yet, but there'll be some kind of thing, like either a part that turns, some kind of part that turns because I want to be able to do it manually, and then I also want to be able to do it with an actuator. So something over here that can do that. I think I don't think it's necessary to have this as long as we have a switch over here that can do that strong. And then this right here is where the part would come in and then it would go into this part where it would be locked in. This would be how it like would lock against the superficial frame and then it'll grab further up from that. And what I mean by that is like if we look here they have this lock and key mechanism and then remember I talked about how there's going to be like a cup and then a cup 90 degree to that so it'd be surrounded on both sides. That would be the same thing on the gripper and then the gripper would actually grab up a little bit higher and grab out over here. So it'll come in and it'll lock in in the same amount of precision as like the superficial frame would. It'll lock up against that with the same amount of precision and then grab a little higher up so it's going at an angle here but it'd be like out here and then that's how I'll grab onto it. So I got to figure out exactly how I'm going to control the pinching of this, but that's pretty close to what we're looking at here. I'm going to run some sprints today. I'm going to do like five sets, I think, and then I'm going to do some ab stuff. So let's get started. Oh, that one's hard. Oh. Oh. <laughs> All right, I've got two little neodymium magnets. Come on, there we go. Two little neodymium magnets and a piece of steel. We're gonna go out and we're gonna run up a quick little test of this and then I'm gonna do a 3D printed part of this and we're gonna make a prototype. Hashtag prototype. So this yoke material is probably a little thicker than it needs to be. I have a little bit of light sensitivity like I'm gonna get a migraine so hopefully that doesn't happen. Take it nice and slow. I got sunglasses if you need them. By the way, the reason I wear sunglasses is not because I like to look cool, is because the light hurts my migraines. It hurts my head. Not always, but... I feel wonky. Really need a better saw. Doing this by hand is dumb. You probably heard me say that quite a few times. I don't believe doing this by hand is the best way to do it. You need a more better expensive saw. So that fits the magnet pretty well. It's not perfectly flat. It's gonna be the only issue with it. Use my circular saw for this and I would get a straighter cut probably, but it's hot. And the friction. Yeah, these are not perfectly flat. I really need a different, better type of saw. There's a saw that I want, it's 250 bucks. Love to buy it. <sighs> like and subscribe to my channel so I can buy a new saw. Subscribe and hit the little bell. You want to hit the little bell, that's what you want to do. Alright, let's figure out if this works, shall we? So, we have these two magnets. So if we take them, 
we put one there, we put one there, and then we put one there, and one there. Then one way, it should go together, and we shouldn't get any magnetism. Okay, great. Now, take them and we flip them. We get magnetism. Look at that. And then we'll flip them back. Like that. And then... No, no magnetism actually works. So what's going is the magnetic flux is going like this. So the magnetic flux is all confined to this steel. This is called a yoke in magnetics. Um, so this is acting as a yoke now, but then when I flip it, because the fields are counter to each other, there's no yoking happening. Um, and so you get magnetic pull. So then if we did that, and we literally just went like this, it'll come right off. Look at that, pretty cool. So now what I'm going to do is I'm going to go run up a little quick 3D printed part that's just going to be like a circle in a circle and some mechanism to hold it together and you'll just be able to turn these and have an on-off magnet just as simple as that uh, two small neodymium magnets just like that. You know, neodymium magnets are really strong. The more, the stronger your magnet is, the uh, more flux you need to keep it confined. So this is important if you're designing like big electromagnets, um, anything that has powerful magnets. Really, there's giant, giant pieces of ferromagnetic material. Ferromagnetic material is like steel, means a magnet is attracted to it. So there's giant yokes of ferromagnetic material on the outside of the large hadron colliders because they're running at like two or three tesla. They're really, really powerful superconducting magnets at the large hadron collider. So surrounding those things is giant pieces of steel to keep all that magnetic flux um, confined to that. If not, you would break all your instruments. You couldn't step close to them without shit flying off your body and stuff. So they have to be confined. So anyway, I thought this would be almost too much steel, but like, like I can barely feel just like very slight amount, which means this is probably very close to like the perfect amount of, of yoke material for this size magnet. You can calculate it. I didn't do that. I just, I didn't do that. I just, uh, I just grabbed some metal that I had laying around my shop in order to do a quick prototype. But it seems to be almost the amount. So like these are pretty small. These would come in and hold on to the suit pretty well, I think. Just come in, something a little small like this. Just grab it, hold it. Like eight, you know, multiple of these per multiple of these per part, at least two. Um, and then you know, holds them and then just come and twist them and then they turn off and then the suit after the bolts are on and then just pull them off. Works really well, I think. You know, I'm a smart guy and I can figure out things pretty quick. Um, like, I mean, it took me probably, I mean, it took me a couple hours to figure this out. Uh, but one thing that I think is interesting psychologically is that even me, who's figured out a lot of crazy shit, I, when I see something like this, sometimes I still get, like, defensive about it. I'm like, oh, it's going to be too hard. It's fucking electromagnetism. It's so wacky. Field lines and shit. I mean, this is super simple. But, like, that was my first gut jerk, knee-jerk reaction to that, which I just think is an interesting psychological thing. So if you're like me, you can probably figure things out. Really, you can figure out anything. Even if you're not that intelligent, you can figure out anything given enough time. So it's really just, you know, your area under the curb, how much time it's going to take you, and then, you know, multiplied by your intelligence level and your knowledge level. But you can figure out anything given enough time. It's just, in some things like this, this is really easy. I just, you have this, like, almost knee-jerk reaction to be afraid of certain things sometimes. And I think it happens a lot with people in math and physics and engineering, stuff like that. They just didn't have a good experience with it in school and then they just, they don't think they can do it or they don't want to do it or whatever, but it's really not that hard. Alrighty, here's a quick pull of how, of a prototype here. So, um, if we look, oh man, my fucking LCD screen is flickering again. It's scary. It wasn't doing that for a long time and now it's doing it, Jesus Christ. Anyway, um, so if we take this part, we'll bolt on right here, and this is just to allow it to hold together and slide. And we take this off, this right here will, this right here slides like that. So that will slide um, those magnets around into the opposite position, turning it on and off. And then there's just a 440 bolt going through there, holding them together. So I'm gonna print that up real quick. And then if you look here, if we look down inside of there, um, you can see well, I can't see my LCD screen right now, but right in there, that's where the metal goes, and then the magnets are going to go in between these holes, and it's all going to be glued in, and then this is going to spin. All right, printing them up. All right, here I am. The print's still going over there, but I'm over here. Um, 
This is uh, fan type compression armor for the hip. So this would be your hip and this would be on the sagittal joint. It'd be on the inside of the armor on the thigh. So here it is like with a thigh on. So this would be looking at your thigh from here. So it'd be like, this would be right here on you. Turning right there. And um, so that would be turning in there, and then there, there might be some springs to reset it, but as you brought your leg up, it would compress this way, and as you brought your leg back that way, it would compress that way. And then so there it would be like with it on there. And like this right here would be kind of how it looked like from the front, right there. And then I'm starting to get somewhere on the lumbar um, armor as well. So this would be kind of like a fan that came up, and then it would be covering up above it, like that and that. So this would be your torso, and that'd be coming up the lumbar, and this would be, I'm sorry, that'd be your pelvis coming up your lumbar to your torso right here. So this would be like from a front view. All right, I got the parts off the printer. I already got one piece of metal shoved in there. I'm gonna go out to the garage and assemble it. Start this with a spot of glue. I think I did something foolish. I forgot to divide the distance of this by two. I had to remake it because something stupid happened. So I guess I'm gonna have to make this magnet twice as strong, which is not what I wanted to do, but because I didn't want to waste that many neodymium magnets. So maybe I'll end up taking this piece apart, but I'm gonna have to add two more because you see now, I don't know if you can see, but that's just enough to make them flush across there. So, so this one will be pretty strong. I dare say. So this should still be a pretty strong magnet right now. There we go. There we go on both sides. So now it's gonna get a lot stronger though, it's gonna have two magnets. Got two more magnets, so let's finish putting this together. There we go. The nice thing about magnets is they wanna go where they're supposed to go. God, if only everything I built was that easy to put together. There we go. Now that should be it right there. So we put it together this way. We should get no magnetic force. And then if I force it around the other way, magnetic force. <laughs> Pretty strong too. So now let's uh ooh. Okay, good. Now let's glue it. Or not glue it, let's uh bolt it together. This needs to be made just a little bit looser. Just a little bit. It almost fits. Uh -oh. See, it got, I don't know if you can tell here, let's see. Right here, if you can tell, there's a little bit, there's a little bit of a lip right there, and that's because the 3D printer, for whatever reason, scooched a little bit while I was printing, and got off of its spot, and printed off a little bit, so now there's that thing. That's probably what's making it not fit perfectly. Drill these out. I have a, a disdain, by the way, for Phillips head driven bolts, but somehow, and I was thinking the other day, I'm like, I would never, ever buy these. I was thinking about a scene in Iron Man, the first movie, where he's tightening it. I'll cut to it here. He's tightening his hand. I'm gonna cut to it here. Anyway, he's tightening his hand, he's sitting there all pissed off, he's tightening it, and I remember thinking to myself, uh, I would never, real Iron Man would never buy a Phillips head. And then, fuck, that's a Phillips head. Alright, let's see if this thing works here. So, the only thing I would have done that would have made it perfect if I had recessed these just slightly, that would have made it like perfect, because then they would fit and it could go flat. But, on, so I guess I need to turn it off, would be to spin it 180. Off. Doesn't stick to anything. Now we spin it back. 180 again, it's a little tight, but and it works. Looks like we figured out a way to do it. It's not crazy strong though. You know, I might want to get even stronger neodymium magnets. I can pull that off a lot easier than I can pull off the one for machining. I don't know. See, it's, it doesn't help that it can't get all the way flat. 
um, back upstairs. That's where I'm ending the vlog for the day, guys. Pretty cool, huh? I think it's neat. So it's, it works. It's not as strong as I wanted it to be. So I got to figure out how to make it stronger. But we're getting there. Um, I think. I see. I put switch magnetic switch or. I have a magnetic switch sketch. This is a lot better than a sketch. This is a prototype. So I need to, so it looks like, let's go over here. Let's go over here instead of just talking about it. All right, that's off right there. This is mostly done right here. Um, I mostly have the armor sketches done. Still need to do that. I'm not, I still need to do some stuff on the neck. So I'll cross that off tomorrow. And then like I said, I'm getting really close to putting a, a due date on the draft too. There's just certain things you can't rush and you don't want to rush because if you rush them, you'll end up doing them poorly. Um, and there's some things that it's okay to rush because it's just almost busy work. It's just like practice. So like doing the stuff on, um, doing the stuff on Fusion 360 is like the practice. So that's where I'm gonna set a due date. I'm like, you're gonna get this done by this date. You're gonna bust your ass, you're gonna get it done. So we get it done. But this kind of stuff, I have to think through and work through and make sure I have everything kind of figured out so that I don't run into crazy issues and end up wasting my time when I actually start doing those repetitions. It's like doing martial arts, you gotta punch a thousand times, but some stuff you also have to just contemplate and figure out when you're building stuff. So, um, I love you guys, you guys are awesome. Um, if you haven't, subscribe to my channel, do so. Also, if you'd like to get notifications about when I make a new video, to remind you to watch my awesome channel, hit the little bell. Um, my mom does that and my mom watches all my videos, so you know you want to do it too. I love you guys. You guys have a great night.